agency. He's also a client in it at that same sports agency. Ben Simmons is a client. Why wouldn't he big up the dude? He he's made he made a promise to his his people made a promise to to make money for him. So of course you're gonna call him next king because you need him to be the next king so he can get a big Nike deal or he can get a big Jordan deal or he can get a big LeBron deal or he can get the Coca Cola and all that. This is a nice looking kid. He's uber talented. Of course LeBron's gonna sing his praises. Because every dime he gets, LeBron gets three to five to eight, or three to eight percent of everything he gonna bring in. So of course he's gonna do it. And then y'all keep falling for it. Joel Embiid is a, 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 a an attention hound, not in a bad way. He's an attention magnet, I should say. He knows how to work the media. Also, he put it out there that Rihanna said she wasn't gonna date him until he became an All Star. When they act, when it was an All Star game, he got announced that he was on the All Star team. He said, nah, I'm an all-star now. I ain't got to deal with her. So he knows how to work the game also. So if you want to continue to have these pointless, frivolous conversations about where LeBron James is going to end up at, do it. But guess what? Nobody knows. And then you can get people like Smith and all the rest of those guys on TV to talk about, hey, LeBron James is going to end up here. My sources say, okay. But how does that help your entertainment value right now? It doesn't. So you can, again, keep talking about nothing or can start watching the games. Now, with that being said, the tanking conversation came up this week with Mark Cuban and at uh, and the NBA commissioner. He was fined over $600,000 for saying it's about being his team's best interest to tank. The only way to stop tanking it's for NBA basketball play uh, basketball fans to turn off the damn TV. Uh, I asked Coach Williams about it. I don't think he got the gist of what I was saying. He was in a hurry. He was doing a few things, and I don't think he got the gist of what I was saying. The way you stop tanking is to not participate. Tanking is cold for pimping out foolish fans, and that's that's just the bottom line because there's no way in hell, and I've said this several times on this show, there's no way in hell you can tell me this. these are the best 500, 450, 500 people in the world playing basketball. There's no way. There's no way you can tell me that because, it's, as Coach Williams stated, if you're good, you're going to get picked up. Okay, if you're good, you're going to get picked up. There are a ton of, there are a ton of Hall of Famers that come from HBCUs. Now, if you can find somebody at HBCU in the 60s and the 70s, how is it that you can't find better basketball players in the 2000s, 45, 55 years later? It is not impossible. It's that you don't want to pay. Let's just be honest, because if your team tanks and you go for it, why don't you just send me a dollar a day for the rest of the year. Everybody in every country that's listening, if y'all send me a dollar a day for the rest of the year, I'm good because that's all you're doing. You're throwing your money away. And if you're going to buy these T-shirts, buy these hats, gloves, jackets, sweatshirts, jerseys, and don't get any entertainment out of it, any, any entertainment value out of it, you can send me that money. And at least you listen to the end of the bench and you're getting it straight up real. Let's be honest. Be, how the hell can can a, a, a entertainment entity, because that's how basketball is, it's an entertaining. If you, contrary, what people don't know is, did you know, fun fact, give it to me by my main man, Stacy. Fun fact, if you complain that the movie wasn't good, you know you can get your money back at the show. Most people don't know that. You can get your money because you pay for a product and you are not satisfied. If you complain, you'll get your money back. So why would you invest your time and hard-earned money into jerseys, T-shirts, hats, gloves, scarves, or what have you in the NBA, and you were watching Pete the Rudy Poot every night, Chicago Bulls? You got a bunch of Rudys out there, man. Come on, man. That's crazy. But I'm going to give you 
between sixty five and ten thousand dollars to watch these bums? No, man, that's crazy. But we do it. Are we tanking? We gonna look no. What you need to do is invest some of that money in your scouting department. And you need to go to scour the HBCU, scour Europe, scour Asia, scour Africa, scour South South America, the Caribbean, and Canada, and get us some better players to watch. That's it. That is it. How is it that the Cubs said we going to Wipe the, the bas- foot, baseball is a much more difficult game to play. How is it the Cubs said we're gonna be good in five years? Got rid of everybody. Five years later, they won the World Series. Hell, five years later, they were in the World Series. Even if they wouldn't have won it, five years later, they were in the World Series. How can you get twenty-five guys in a more difficult situation to be successful, but y'all can't get? 15 guys in a, out of a pond and you should be fishing with a wide net because it's a worldwide net. Hey, the Cubs went to the Dominican Republic, the Cubs went to Asia, the Cubs went all over the world to get recruit players and they got them and they drafted them. They, they recruited, they, they, they scouted, they, they drafted, they developed and won a World Series. Because they said that's what we're going to do. The Yankees did it even less time. The Yankees said we're falling off. Uh, we're gonna be. Uh, we're gonna be back in a minute. A minute later, they were back. Two seasons later, they were back. So stop it with the madness. If you want your team to be good, stop going. Now, I'm about as I go into the hip, uh, football section. I'm gonna be a bit of a hypocrite, but you've already been warned. But you, if you, if you don't want to be in a in a, a a trick bag, stop going. I guarantee you, they'll get better players. If all the teams who don't make the playoffs with a bunch of Rudys on that team, all those fans stop going, it'll be a different situation, man. Start watching college basketball. Turn your TV off anytime a pro game come on. I guarantee you. They'll find better players, they invest more money, and they'll invest in your entertainment. That's their job anyway. That is the job of the NBA anyway. I, I've said it time and time again. The only teams that have been added is the Timberwolves, the Grizzlies, the Timberwolves, the Grizzlies, the Heat, the Magic, and that's it. Oh, and the Pelicans. Put them at 30. So you're talking about 25 teams used to be able to field three to five NBA All-Stars or NBA All-Star caliber players. And now all of a sudden, you can't give me nothing. Even the Sacramento Kings and the Clippers used to have some All-Stars. Mitch Richmond was an All-Star. The Clippers had Danny Manning. They had Child Smith. They had Doc Rivers. They had Ron Harper. They had Mark Jackson. They had they had ability. They didn't have leadership. So if the Clippers and the Sacramento Kings can draft some solid players, there's no way in hell you can tell me the Chicago Bulls best player is a Rudy. Or the Knicks, who haven't made the playoffs three years in a row since Patrick Ewan left and, and the trail pretty well and that crew was there. So I ain't trying to hit that man. And don't tell me about oh, well, they don't have no players in the top round. Hey, Gilbert Arenas is a second round player. The Trail Spearwell was was uh, drafted in the middle of the first round. Eddie Jones, middle of the first round. Van Max was second round. You can find talented players. Don't tell me about this nonsense. Bonzi Wells. I mean, I can go on and on and on about players that was drafted outside of the lottery and into the second round. Ginobili. That worked. So just because you ain't drafted in the lottery don't mean anything. Don't tell me you can't find nobody. Scotty Pippen was from an NAIA school. If you don't understand what an NAIA school is, you have Division One, which is the Ohio State's, UNC's, the Virginia's, the teams that are going to be in the tournament. You have Division Two. You got a, a, a Division Three. You have junior college, and then you have NAIA schools. 
Those schools don't even offer scholarships. Scottie Pippen, and I can't think his name, played for the Lakers. Devin George, I think his name was. Those dudes got drafted in the NBA in the first round with, with damn student loans. So don't tell me you can't find anybody. It's a lie. So if you want to keep getting, if you want to fix uh, uh, tanking, I have I have a few ideas. I, I I definitely have a few ideas on how to fix tanking. Like, hey, change the lottery system. You can't get the first pick in the lottery two years in a row. Period. Under no circumstance. So if you get the lottery and you don't think that's a good player, you are not even eligible for the lottery the next season. I bet you people stop tanking then. Or and, and if you were at the top of the lottery last year. What we're going to do is use those analytics that everybody's so proud of. This guy can hit this shot from this corner on that. Use those same analytics to discover what team played the most efficient basketball and had that was outside of the playoffs. That's the team that get the most balls. So or what if they tank again two years? Remember, if you do it that way, you're not going to tank because you're not going to get the top pick. You're not even eligible for the lottery, even though you didn't make the playoffs last year. So you are going to either, A, trade that pick and get some quality players in or make the best possible choice of a draft pick. You're not drafting on he might be good in 2021 because your fans don't have, you want your fans to pay in 2018, 19, 20, and 21. So you're not going to do that. Uh, you're not going to Jermaine O'Neal the game and sit on the bench for four years and not get no, no major tick. You're going to either contribute or you're going to stay your behind in school or you're going to stay in the G League or you're going to go over to Europe and play or do whatever you're going to do. That's how you fix this tanking thing. Everybody, it's not, it's not damn rocket science. It's sports, people. We're talking about sports. We're not curing cancer. We're not curing anything. It's entertainment. Find the best actor to play the role of Black Panther. Find the best actor to be Killmonger. Find the best actor to be Malcolm X. So forth and so on. It's not difficult. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's just not. It's checkers, not chess. And speaking of checkers versus checks, the NFL has gone into their annual uh, rule change mode. We're going to fix the league. We're going to make it better for you. First and foremost, Stop trying to fix something that's not broken. And when I say it's not broken, y'all, you guys in the NFL always talk about the distractions that the players are having, and that's why people are turning away. How about this millionaire versus billionaire argument that Jerry Jones and uh, that the owners have put Roger Goodell and made him the pinata once again? He's the whipping boy. And said, Roger Goodell is suing, it's, it's, it's about to find Jerry Jones and make him uh, pay. Uh, legal fees. People, that's not Roger Goodell. Again, stop watching TV and listen to what they say. There's a rule in the NFL that if you cause the league to in, uh, uh, require uh, uh, attorney assistance, you and if, and if you are found liable, you have to pay that. They're just enforcing the rule that's already on the book. So it's really not Roger Goodell versus Jerry Jones. You know, the thing that ESPN has been doing for the last four or five days, maybe even seven days, to make it seem like there's something really going on that is not. It's no big deal, people. False alarm is not real. Now, in regards to the rules, they are going to revisit the catch rule. Now, the catch rule has been a very controversial thing for the last nine years, 2010. Calvin Johnson caught the ball at the buzzer against the Chicago Bears. He stood up, used the ball to help him stand up. They said he didn't catch the ball. The most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. Since that point, we've had about six to ten things, six to ten instances that cost teams games in regards to a catch or a non-catch. What they're going to do at this point is simplify the catch rule. Uh, the, the original catch rule was designed, and if I'm remembering this correctly, with a 50 guy in a bar mentality. And what that means is if 50 people in a bar say it's a catch, it's a catch. That's it. 
That's all. If 50 people in a bar say, hey, that's 